I'm um, your skipper for today, and what I'm going to do is give you the safety briefing about, uh, about this vessel and make sure that everything is right for you. But the first thing I want to say is that uh, the reason we're going to see is for your fun. And uh, we're also going to have fun ourselves, actually, because it's the, uh, the classics uh, rally and uh, regatta and all that sort of thing. So this is a first for us, and we're rather looking forward to it. Um, so having said uh, that this is for your fun, um, what I really mean is that you have to identify everything that you want to do that we haven't put in the way of you. So definitely you've all got to have a steer. Everybody's got to have a steer. <laughs> um, definitely you've got to pull on ropes if you want to pull on ropes. And the, the most likely time will be in the first um, 10 minutes once we're out of the harbour because that's when all the sails go up. And uh, the youngsters are very much encouraged to join in with the ropes as well. And we'll all make sure that there's one of the crew there helping with the ropes. But I want you to be in charge of putting the bowsprit out. Okay? And Peter, Peter who is uh, the, the guy with his back to us up there, not with the red shorts, but with the green shorts, he'll be there making sure you do it safely. Okay? So you're going to be in charge of the bowsprit. So fairly early on, you need to go and talk to him and say, how do I put the bowsprit out? Okay? <laughs> Lovely. Um, so, every aspect of this is, is so that you can get the most out of it. Um, and sometimes I might forget that someone hasn't had a, a steer or hasn't, uh, whatever. Uh, and uh, it, it'll, it'll be your fault if you don't have fun. <laughs> um, we're going to sail at quarter past eleven. And uh, we'll be back in something after half past four, I think. And it's a bit difficult to, to work out. There's a parade of sail at three o'clock, uh, sorry, 1300. Then th there's a race starting at 1345. And we will be sailing alongside the vessels doing the racing. So we're not actually racing because uh, we're not insured to race. Um, but we will go alongside them and be part of what's going on. Uh, and then we'll, we'll get back in when we can. The reason we're sailing at quarter past 11 is because uh, it's still just after low water. And there's, not, there's plenty of water in here, there's not a lot out in the sand. So that's that. Okay, onto the, um, the safety stuff. Um, probably the, the most likely issue that will cause you a problem is hitting your head. And I hit my head on more things than most people. So these are an issue. Uh, but, but the most important thing is stuff on the deck and bits of rope, standing on bits of rope is not generally wise. Standing inside a coil like that, if that rope went tight, it would get me. And they get, sometimes they go tight very quickly. So you always check and you stand in the place that is unlikely to go tight. That rope is perfectly all right to stand on because where you're sitting, it's, it's, tight, it's turned up. Uh, but generally, always be aware of ropes on the deck. And this, this wire is permanently fitted and forever I'm tripping over it, but uh, we don't want to trip. Um, heads, this is not a problem to most people, apart from me. And I put my head there more times than soft mick. Everything changes when you look at this big guy here, this block is exactly the height to take my head off. And I often stand just here saying, well, how are we doing then? And I forget. And if I forget, well, then you'll forget. So that block, standing here, is perfectly okay. But the natural place seems to be to want to stand just here. And, you know, I've, I've not actually been hit by this. The boom is generally high enough to, uh, to miss you. When we're working the sails, you will naturally see that there are areas where there's a lot going on and you either are part of it by working the ropes or you're a bit out of it so that uh, you don't get hurt by, by anything. Um, up forward there's a white bar uh, called a horse across the deck and there's a note on, the, on it saying uh, don't go forward here or wear a harness or something. But please don't go forward of the white bar unless you're with a member of crew who's asking you to do something with a rope. Um, but the white bar is a good thing. Where don't you go in this boat? 
that's it. Don't go in front of the white bar. Good boy. The next thing is leaning against the side. Madam, I've forgotten your name. Helen. Helen is perfectly okay leaning there. It's a metal bar. We've designed it so you can lean against it. You're perfectly all right sitting there, but anywhere forward of this metal bar, please don't sit on the edge of the, the boat, because it's very easy to slip. You know, it's not just a bit of health and safety, it's actually very easy. And the most delightful place to sit is right up in the bow where it curves round and it feels great, the water's going by, topple over, straight through the propeller, come out in five pieces back there. <laughs> and it's not, it's not nice. So don't, don't sit all lean. And at the moment there's no, no, no ropes or anything there. You see that spar and then that bit of rope, that will be the same on the other side. But please don't lean on them. They're, they're there to catch you if you fall. They're not there to be permanent little lens gears. Uh, life, who took my life jacket? I had a life jacket here just to show you how it was. I'll be back. I've never worn a life jacket. Oh, lovely. Uh, would, you, would you care to uh, put it on for us? Now, life jackets. If we, uh, you don't have to wear life jackets whilst we're underway. Uh, you can do. If anybody would like to wear a life jacket, then please do. If there's anything like any weather, I shall put my life jacket on because it's good leadership and then nobody else is embarrassed about putting them on. This is called a jacket because it's like a jacket. So if you imagine this as a waistcoat, your arm goes in one side, and your other arm goes in the other side and there it is clipping up no no don't pull that <laughs> that t-bar goes through there and you have to help it through like that and now it's perfect the low numbered life jackets one two three are supposed to be are probably made small the large ones the high numbers are set large so i'd go for 22 myself <laughs> um, if you need to adjust your life jacket there's a, 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 a shortener here it goes around there so you actually have to take it off you can see that it, it, it'll never come off in the water take it off and you just move this bit of cloth <coughs> Excuse me. You pull a bit of cloth round and that lengthens the jacket and that's a slightly more comfortable fit for you. The final part of life jackets is that, and I'm going to just change subject slightly, we parents who take our kids to sea wearing inflation jackets that are adult jackets we actually commit them to die because a life jacket that's not adjusted correctly flows up like that and those big buoyant things they end up up here the water levels there and here's your child nicely suspended underwater perfect except it's not so what you must do is if you have to use an adult life jacket on a kid tie some rope around their armpits to hold it down or better still uh, no, no. A device like this, which clips in and holds it down. So, something to hold life jackets down. And I, I always talk about kids because I've seen so many, uh, if they jump in a swimming pool, they end up with the life jacket up there and their heads down here, and they're like that. And you know, there's no way that a kid can solve that problem. Happy? Yeah. Any questions about life jackets? Good. So we won't need them. If you want to wear them, you can do. Would anyone like to wear them? No. Uh, but please don't hesitate. And I, I always put mine on if we're going any distance or going out. And uh, that's not a great message, but uh, but it does mean other people feel uh, feel com confident to do it. Okay, you can take that off. Thank you very much. Um, oh, I didn't say all the normal airline stuff. You can pull a little red toggle and that inflates it. If you fall in the water, it sets itself off. If everything fails, inside it there's still a little blow thing. There's also a whistle, there's also a light, but uh, uh, let's hope. You stay together if you have to leave this ship, but why would you have to leave a wooden ship? Because a wooden ship, even when sinking, will still float. 
and this big thing the lifeboat will find much more easily than you. So stay with the ship, don't jump over the side. If the crew start getting things in the water, you'll know it's time to start thinking about getting out of there. <laughs> but uh, I don't mean abandon me because I've already gone. But, uh, but rather obviously, a wooden ship is the place to stay. And if this boat is not below the waterline, then stay with her. Um, we have three life rafts. There's one. There are two forward of the doghouse there. And uh, those self-deploy, if you need, if we did sink, they would come out and they would burst out and become life rafts. Uh, or we can lift them out, throw them in the water, and they, you, you pull a, a piece of rope and that makes them uh, float. Um, if we did have to get into life rafts, then the best way to do it is to pull the life rope back, life, <laughs> life raft back to the ship, and then step in to the opening. Don't jump into the sea and then try and climb up the little rope ladder in the life raft, which I've had to do, and it's really hard, especially when you're wet and you've got boots on and full foul weather gear. So you just step into it, and you know, it's not gonna be rough today. So that's got that out of the way, but of course, I hope it'll be in there if we happen to need it. Um, We've got fire extinguishers down below, the crew will deal with any fire, but the only place we could get a fire would either be the galley, where we're going to have a cup of tea at lunchtime, so uh, maybe yeah, we'll have a fire, but we won't. Uh, and there's an engine room down here, but we've got automatic firefighting systems for that. Uh, but there are fire extinguishers all the way through. So that completes the safety aspects of the brief. I haven't mentioned the, uh, the heads, the toilets down below, uh, and the port side down the forehead of the saloon, it has got an electric head, you do whatever you do, you put the lid down because it's a vacuum thing, press a button and it, it empties itself. On the starboard side, in the Laura Ashley suite, <laughs> I'll say that again, the Laura Ashley suite, um, there's a toilet in there just like any yacht. It's a normal sit down affair, it's got a pumping handle and there's a little lever, upwards pump stuff out forwards pump stuff out and water in and so I always run it with the lever forward you know near to you and you just pump like mad and you do have to pump like mad to get the water in over the top and then it'd be nice to pump it about 15 times people get worn out after that but uh, that's the heads if we feel seasick then the secret is to do some hard work and maybe get on the wheel if you feel a little bit queasy if you don't feel like doing that, then definitely stay on the upper deck and look at the horizon. Then the ship rotates around your eyes and the eyes stay still and everything feels better. So flat horizon is the, the solution to seasickness and maybe dry biscuits and that sort of thing. But I hope today won't be one of those types of days, so that'll be a good. You're completely free to go down below and have a look, uh, look round and lie on a bunk or something <laughs> if you want to um, and we'll find a time for lunch you've all brought food lovely and uh, I, I should just have it whenever you want because I don't think we'll be having a formal dining session <laughs> so does anybody have any questions can I just have your name for the video again please John, <laughs> I'm John Welsh I'm the captain for today thank you, thank you very much um, <laughs> Any deep and technical questions, um, Colin Brokenshire, who is likely to sit himself just there. Colin, who is... Oh, he's sitting down with the long red trousers. He knows everything about everything. So uh, if you've got any questions that I can't answer, then ask Colin. <laughs> and if you've got any difficult ones, ask Colin straight away. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm just about to take the head rope off. That's the head rope, John. Confirm all lines gone. Boat hook that side, please. Boat, boat hook that side. side. The big one, Neil. Right. Yeah. 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 Go around to the stern and then wait to come in at midship, so all the way around if you can. Oh you won't you won't get round uh, Bob, you won't get round. Okay, slow us there and start. That's too much power. Right, this is where I want fenders guys and the boat hook. And will you go Part of the track. Uh, out there. This is stopped, are we? No. Stop, yeah, mate. Thank you. the uh, the end bollard so if i miss it you can take it pop it on please thank you stop stop right now okay one pump ahead please uh, i just need to loosen this end would you help him please okay Mushroom if you can please. On the 
Sorry? Onto the mushroom one if you can, please. The second one. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. Okay, as soon as you're clear, you're going to have to sit down, down and slack. Of course, I go back. It's okay. Keep slack. Slow ahead. Today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's a good fender anyway. <laughs> Probably the best. <laughs> okay, pull me down that way, please. If you can push, uh, Bob, that would be wonderful. Hey, thank you. Push it. We've got the narrowest of gaps to get through here. It's a bit like a maze going through. Okay, Bob, it's uh, yours now if you can push. I've not got the engine moving. We're okay, going slow astern, John. Stop. Okay, thanks very much. Okay. <laughs> okay, stop the engine. How to test right, the equipment. I've broken me tool. <laughs> oh, you haven't. Yeah. It sounds painful. No, oh, you snapped it. <laughs>
<laughs> we sing you already. You're supposed to sing now is the hour. Yeah. But more for those in peril. We don't mind, Rich. Yeah, give us a smile. Yeah, a smile. <laughs> Wait for YouTube. <laughs> that is his smile. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell because of the beard. Okay, let's get prepared to come along. No, I guess we just have to lasso them. Well, the wind will be blowing us down. We can catch this when it. Uh... Okay, turn it up, please. Well, that lady's sitting. Yeah. Could you move down? Push. Yeah. Push. Yeah. Push. Yeah. Push. Yeah. Push. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
Make one up. We're going to go around to Port Bay. There's only you and us. Big our oats. Is there anything we can bear away with? Let's get one of these photos off. on our port bow. to everyone on Vigilance for the privilege of going out with them today during the Plymouth Classic Boat Weekend. Also thanks to the Plymouth Classic Boat Organisers. To hire Vigilance or go out on Vigilance, you can contact them direct. This has been a Chris Summerfield Media Production 2016. You can contact me through ccs2012 at hotmail.com and also, if you can help me, sponsor me through christophersummerfield at gmail.com. That's on PayPal.